Yo, yeah, what is going on dudes? Hopefully everyone is doing okay, so welcome back to the channel. We're going to be carrying on with the Mod 1 series. In this video, we're going to cover the last part of the Mod 1. Control stop, emergency brake and hazard avoidance. Your speed will get noted for two of these manoeuvres emergency brake and hazard avoidance it will not get noted for the controlled stop if you look down in the description there is a link that will take you to the government website that gives you all the official mod one pictures and graphs including a size chart if you want to practice this yourself so this is not going to be to scale because i don't have the room okay it is quite a big area but there's <laughs> there's curbs there's metal posts and everything in the way if this was all clear it would be absolutely perfect i'd, I'd generally have a proper mod one setup done so we're going to do the controlled stop first your speed doesn't get marked down for your controlled stop but it is the exact same place and area and cones that you go through for the rest of it just a little disclaimer here when i do this it's not going to be at the proper speed because i'm not going to have the room to do it at the proper speed i might even need to adjust this a wee bit we're doing this as if we're going around the right hand corner you might do it to the left depends on the setup on the day so what i'm going to do is we're going to come round here when you're going round your right hand corner you're going to be doing it at roughly about 20 miles per hour there's no way i'm going to be doing that at 20 miles per hour and what you're going to do for the controlled stop is you're going to come through this is where the speed trap is going to be ignore these cones for the time being if you do look at the diagram you'll see that there's actually more cones the speed trap itself is actually four cones because it's a speed trap on either side and then there's cones on each corner of it for the sake of this video i'm just doing the two cones in fact you know what that'll make it easier to spot all right so that's where your speed trap would be it might be slightly different like i said it's not going to be to scale but that doesn't matter at the moment so your controlled stop the examiner wants to see that you can bring the bike to a controlled stop from a reasonable pace 32 miles per hour or 50 kilometers per hour all right so they just want to see that you can bring the bike to a nice controlled stop like i said when you go through the speed trap for the first run your time doesn't get marked down but what i want you to do is use it as a practice when you go through the speed trap for the first time just as you go through it have a wee blink down at your speedo all right don't look at your speedo just quickly go like that all right just even your eyes you know and you want to see what speed you're doing if you're doing 30 all you have to do is for your next run slight bit more power all right the key is listening to what the engine is doing if you can hear that you're traveling at the right speed the speedo says say 32 33 all you have to do is match that sound for the other two runs now something else that you can do is when you go through the speed trap once you're through the speed trap your speed doesn't matter anymore so regardless of what manoeuvre it is you're doing once you've went through the speed trap get off the power all right there's no much point being on the power because you don't need it it's going to make your emergency brake easier it's going to make your hazard avoidance easier and it's going to make your control stop easier this fast maneuver stuff will start at the end of your u-turn when you finish your u-turn you'll be pointing in the direction of the circuit where you need to go around okay when you go around it obviously you're going to do a control stop so you're going to be facing that way your instructor will say when you're ready turn around and wait back here do not try and be a smart aleck and do another u-turn the examiner will even say to you take as much room as you need so take as much room as you need do not risk trying to show off doing another u-turn for whatever reason you muck it up and you go but you put your foot down you've just failed your test for trying to be smart don't try to be smart all right just get the bike turned around take as much room as you need all right so just take that into consideration just remember that when you ask you to turn around at the end of these circuits you don't have to do a u-turn you can do a big wide turn all right we'll go over that in a second so the first run what we're going to do is we would actually be in fact we'll go down this side so we would be here we've just finished a u-turn and we're going to be doing the right hand circuits we're going to be turning to the right that is our speed trap over there ignore those cones just now all right so check check want to get up to speed now obviously i can't get up to speed here all right as you go around the corner you're going to be wanting to do about 20 miles per hour roughly now when you straighten the bike back up you only really need to mount second gear for it really all right you go through the speed trap nice controlled stop all right 
clamp down into first before you stop, make sure you pull the clutch in before you stop so you don't stall it. Alright, the examiner's now going to say, okay, make your way back round, so check, check, don't be smart and do a U-turn, take as much room as you need. I'm doing this as an example, this is the kind of turn you can do, and in this time, it's going to be the emergency brake. Now, the emergency brake is also one of those things that can be easily messed up and it can cost you your test. U-turn and emergency brake are two of those things that are you need to make sure you're on point for them now the point of the emergency brake is to make sure you can stop the bike in an emergency now there are things that you should do things that you shouldn't do all right the things that you shouldn't do is squeeze really hard and fast in the front brake all right don't do that because there's a good chance you're going to cause the bike or the front wheel to skid even if it skids a wee bit you failed you need to be it's basically a fast controlled stop remember that braking video we did where we spoke about progressive braking that's what you're doing you're doing a firm progressive brake so you're not going whoop you're going nice and gradual but firm all right as the bike starts to slow down you can apply more pressure now you might be advised by your instructor don't use the back brake because what can happen is people might freak out a wee bit and they'll think oh my god I need to push really hard on the back brake to stop and if you push really hard on the back brake even though it's not as powerful as the front you will lock the back wheel so if your instructor says don't use the back brake don't use the back brake if your instructor says front brake only use the front brake only it's absolutely doable okay you're going to have to get up to about 32 miles per hour this time your speed is going to be marked so once you've done it the examiner will come over he'll either say yes or no if he comes over and says your speed was 29 can you go around again what you have to do is just apply a wee bit more power i'm not going to be able to get up to speed here but i can still show you the, the technique so check check you're going to go up and round you're going round the right hand corner you're going to be doing roughly 20 miles an hour as you're going round obviously i'm not because of the area once you come round what you want to do is you're probably going to be in second gear anyway crank it open all right now that is my emergency stop. I didn't have to use a back brake there. All right. Now, I don't know if you noticed what I did there. When I went through the speed trap, the four cones, I cut the power. All right. There's no much point keeping the power on if you don't need to. So basically what you're doing is you're through, cut the power, and you're stopping. All right. So as soon as you go through the speed trap, get off the throttle. And let the bike naturally slow down for that split second before you apply the brakes right so you're going through off the power on the brakes and remember to pull on the clutch now this is an important bit as well okay you're probably going to be in second gear when you're doing this all right so don't worry about putting it down to first the most important thing is getting the bike stopped all right so as soon as the examiner raises his hand that's what he'll do he'll, he'll go through you'll go through the speed trap he'll raise his hand at a certain point you get on the brakes, all right? All you have to do is make sure you pull that clutch in before you stop, just to stop the bike stalling. So if you're in second gear, it doesn't matter. You can sort the gears out once you've stopped. The most important thing about the emergency brake is stopping the bike, okay? Now remember, when I'm going through the speed trap, I'm instantly doing my emergency brake. That's not gonna be the case. You have to wait for your examiner to raise his hand, but you can still get off the power. Still cut the power and wait for him to raise his hand. All right, so one more time. They're coming around, we're going to pretend we're in second here. We're going through the speed trap, raised his hand, stopped the bike. And we're in second, it doesn't matter, now we can fix it. This is the hazard avoidance. Okay, so we're going to come through the speed trap. And rather than going straight through here, you're going to go in between these two. You're going to use counter steering. You're not going to use traditional steering like what you would do on a U-turn. You're going to counter steer this hazard avoidance section okay so all you're doing is when you come to do it you just simply push and push back that's it and all you're doing is you're making the bike go whoop like that and around it all right so again make sure all your checks are done this is going to be the last section of the test so what you want to do is you're coming around 
through the speed trap, off the power, through and through. All right. Now you're actually going a bit faster than that, so it's a lot easier. <laughs> it is a lot easier to do it at speed, uh, at 30 miles an hour anyway. So all you're doing is you're flicking the bike to one side and then flicking it back. That's it. You're just doing a quick right and left, all right? There's nothing fancy about it, there's nothing technical about it. All you have to make sure is you, you don't do it, is you don't grab the brakes when you're going through this, all right? You don't even want to hit any brakes until you've went through this section, all right? So through, off the power, flick, flick, nice controlled stop. Now remember, when you're turning, before you start this section, you don't have to do a U-turn, come to a nice controlled stop. The examiner's going to say this is a hazard avoidance. Again, check, check, off you go. When you're out of the corner, whack it open, make sure you're doing the correct speed. Through, through, controlled stop. Now at this point, that is the end of the manoeuvres. It doesn't mean it's the end of the test. Now, let's just pretend we have stopped here after doing a hazard avoidance. The examiner's now going to say, go over and wait at the gate. We're going to pretend that's the gate again, so check, check, because we're still in the middle of our test. Don't go fast, just take your time. You know, do a wee check here and there, just to make sure that he can see that you're aware of what's going on around about you. We mirror check, stop at the gate, wait for him. He'll then come up, open the gate, he'll then tell you to go and park in one of the bays. Again, check, check. Pull up into your bay and pop it into neutral and switch off the bike. Now I just sat there until he came up and he says right hop off the bike and went in and he was like yep yeah, you passed. So that is pretty much all there is to the mod one. This is actually the third video in the series. If you've not seen the first two go and check them out. We cover all other aspects of the mod one. Now remember this isn't to scale just purely because I don't have that much room here. If we didn't have this stuff, it would have been so much better. So everything on your mod 1 is going to be bigger. And just remember to get your speed correct when you're going through speed traps. The actual mod 1 area, I reckon, is from that fence to... I don't know, maybe Costa. Maybe a wee bit more. Maybe, a, you know, it's a big, big area. So there is plenty of room. And if you want to come down somewhere and practice it by yourself, Remember to check the link down in the description, it takes you to the government website that gives you the official Mod 1 layout. You know, it varies depending on the test centre, obviously. And it also gives you all the sizes for things like, you know, the U-turn, slalom, figure of eight. So if you do want to practice it somewhere by yourself, you can measure it out and get a pretty much close to scale, providing you have um, enough room. So that's about it for the Mod 1. You know, there's not really a lot to it. The test itself is less than 10 minutes, so you're only going to be in the test centre, you know, not long. Not the actual test centre, I mean the testing area. You're just going to be out and then back in. Remember when you go for your Mod 1, take all your documents that you need. CBT, driving licence, theory test, all that sort of stuff, because if you don't have it, you won't get out. If your CBT has ran out, unfortunately, you're going to have to reset it. There's no way about that, unfortunately. If it's ran out, it's ran out, so you don't have it. But there are a few key things to remember about the Mod 1. Just take your time. If you're stuck on the U-turn, go back and watch that video. Remember the reference points, remember your throttle and clutch control. Wee bit of back brake if needed. I mean, I myself was guilty of this when I was learning to do my U-turn. I was overthinking it, you know. It's not something you have to overthink, it's a fairly straightforward manoeuvre. But by having the right things in place, looking at the right areas, and making sure that your slow control is pretty damn good, you'll be absolutely fine. The same with the faster part of the test. Remember, you have to be doing a minimum of 32 or 50 kilometers an hour. The first one isn't marked down, so your time will not get recorded, but use it as a practice, so you know roughly how fast you're going. And then all you have to do for the second and third run is listen to the engine and match that sound, and then you'll know that you're going roughly the correct speed. So that's about it for the Mod 1 dudes. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this little series. It's not a difficult test. You know, it is one of those things where people definitely make it harder than what it is. You know, it's not difficult. 
it just takes a bit of patience, a bit of practice. Um, once you've got each of those manoeuvres down, you know, you'll be absolutely good. And the biggest thing to remember is the test area itself is absolutely massive. All right, it is huge. So we were training back there. We were doing maybe two and a half meter between the slalom cones. I think it's like four meters, four and a half meters between the slalom cones. So that's almost double. All right, we just had to do it that size because of lack of space. All right, and we were doing it no problem. There is absolutely loads of room. And remember, with the figure of eight, you can be nice and wide. As long as you go between the cones, you're absolutely fine. Just don't hit any. Well, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little series. If there's anything you're unsure of, anything you didn't understand, anything you're stuck with regarding Mod 1 or even Mod 2, if you're training for your Mod 2, I've got a Mod 2 series that will link it up in the corner for you. Feel free to get in touch, message me in the comments, leave a comment below, get me on social media, even join the Discord if you want, if you use Discord. If not, it's a free to use app and it is awesome for keeping up to date with everything that I'm doing. You can chat away to fellow bikers, you can show off your beautiful two wheels to everybody and it's just a cool place to hang out as well. Always have a good chat. Anyway guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you have guys, give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate every single one of your likes and of course if you want to see all of my uploads, click on that subscribe button and ring the bell while you're there. That way you get notified every time I upload a video. But until next time dudes, stay safe, ride safe, and take it easy.